Imagine a storm uh, born thousands of miles away right across the ocean, and it travels all that way just to unleash havoc on a totally different continent. That's really the amazing journey at the heart of our deep dive today. We're digging into this late August 2025 severe weather outbreak that's sweeping across Central Europe and the Northern Med. And the driver, the main force behind it all, it's actually the remnants, the post-tropical leftovers of Hurricane Aaron. Right, Aaron. The first Category 5 of the 2025 Atlantic season. Quite something. Exactly. So our mission really is to connect those dots for you, you know, from this incredibly powerful hurricane all the way to a continental scale threat over in Europe. Yeah. Help make sense of what's unfolding and importantly, why. Let's jump in. Well, what's just uh, really fascinating is how a system that starts in the tropics can hold on to its energy and influence weather patterns so far flung. Aaron started as a tropical wave off Africa that was back on August 9th. It actually caused, believe it or not, nine fatalities in Cape Verde just from heavy rain. Wow. Even that early. Yeah, and then it just exploded. Rapid intensification into a record-breaking Category 5 by August 16th. We're talking 160 mile per hour winds, pressure down to 915 millibars. Just a beast of a storm. Okay, but here's the bit that gets me. Even as it moves over colder water, mm. becoming post-tropical, that energy doesn't just vanish, right? Not at all. How does a storm that's technically not a hurricane anymore manage to, like, turbocharge the jet stream? Mm. and carve out this massive trough over Europe that's causing all this trouble. It's, uh, it's a classic case of what we call atmospheric teleconnection. Aaron's sheer power, its energy, basically injected so much momentum into the upper atmosphere, it created this huge ripple effect, um, essentially bending and amplifying the jet stream. Uh -huh. And that allowed it to dig this really deep, slow-moving trough right across Europe. And, you know, even before this main severe event kicked off, we saw initial impacts. By August 25th, places like the UK and Ireland were already getting huge ocean swells, 10, 12 meters, plus quite a bit of rain, 50, 80 millimeters, sort oh, yeah. of priming the pump, really. Okay, so... Aaron sets the stage, digs the trough, but it sounds like the atmosphere over Europe itself was kind of preloaded. Yeah. You mentioned a loaded gun environment. What were the ingredients already there? Precisely. That deep trough from X Aaron basically slammed into a developing low pressure system near the Ligurian Sea. That specific setup, it's almost a textbook trigger for severe weather in Europe. Right. Plus, Europe was already dealing with a heat wave, ground is hot, and crucially, the Mediterranean Sea surface temperatures were unusually warm. Okay. So you combine the trough, the surface low, the heat, and these warm seas. Boom, you get this plume of moisture, what some call an atmospheric river, mm -hmm. feeding straight into the system. It's just pouring fuel on the fire. And with all that fuel, that moisture and heat, what kind of storms does that actually cook up? You mentioned instability and shear. Yeah, exactly. You get extreme instability. We measure it as Cape Convective available. Potential energy and values were forecast to exceed 3,000 joules per kilogram. That's a, that's a lot of fuel for thunderstorms. Huge number. Huge. And then you add strong vertical wind shear. That means the wind speed and direction change significantly as you go up in the atmosphere. That's the key ingredient that helps storms start rotating, organize, and become long-lived supercells. Supercells, right, the really dangerous ones. So putting it all together, this isn't just a quick burst of storms, is it? It's unfolding over several days. No, definitely not. This is a multi-day event, and it's generally shifting southeastward. It sort of kicked off Wednesday night over northeast Spain, southern France, initial hail, some wind. Okay. Thursday, though. That looks like the peak day for widespread impact. We're talking southern France, Switzerland, the whole Alpine region, north central Italy, the big hazards there. Extreme rainfall, easily 100 to 200 millimeters quite widely. Wow. But some localized spots, especially in the Alps, could see over 300 millimeters. Switzerland actually issued its highest red alerts for places like Ticino and Graubünden because of major flash flood and landslide risks. And it's not just rain, right? Supercells mean other threats. Absolutely. Beyond the flooding, you've got the risk of very large damaging hail, potentially bigger than five centimeters, destructive straight line winds are likely, and yes, a few tornadoes can't be ruled out either. And this continues into the weekend. It does. On Friday, the main threat axis pushes eastward. Think Eastern Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, down into central Italy, the Adriatic region, still looking at supercell potential and a very high flood risk. Okay. Then Saturday, it's sort of the concluding stages, moving over southern Italy and the southwestern Balkans, Montenegro, Albania. Still persistent heavy rain, still a risk of localized flooding, but perhaps starting to wind down slightly. The impacts sound significant. 
beyond the immediate weather threats, what does this mean for, say, infrastructure? Oh, it's a major concern. Think about the power grid. High winds, lightning, flooding can all cause widespread outages. Transportation is going to be heavily impacted. Expect road and rail closures and major delays at airports like Milan, Zurich, Munich are pretty much a given. And agriculture too, I imagine. This timing is terrible for harvest. Absolutely devastating. Vineyards, orchards, they're incredibly vulnerable to large hail right now. We saw reports uh, citing areas like Util Ricana in Spain, possibly losing up to 60% of their grape harvest, just wiped out. 60%, that's huge. Yeah. Okay, so for people in the path of these storms, yeah. what's the crucial safety advice? Number one, stay informed. Monitor the warnings from your National Weather Service and Meteo Alarm, that's the official European alert system. Take them seriously. Right. For flooding, the message is simple but vital. Turn around, don't drown. It takes surprisingly little moving water to be dangerous. Just 15 centimeters, about six inches, can knock you off your feet. 30 centimeters a foot can sweep away most vehicles. Good reminder. And for the severe thunderstorms, the hail, wind, potential tornadoes. Get inside a sturdy building, stay away from windows, go to an interior room on the lowest floor if possible. Basements are best if you have one. Okay, essential advice. This whole event, tracing Aaron from the Atlantic all the way to this European outbreak, yeah. it really shows how connected our planet's weather systems are, doesn't it? It really does. It's a stark reminder, you know, how a record-breaking storm thousands of miles away can set off this cascade, this compound weather event impacting millions. It's maybe a glimpse into the kind of complex, high-impact scenarios we might face more often. So a final thought for you, our listeners, to maybe ponder. Mm -hmm. As we see these powerful global connections playing out, what does this kind of deep dive tell us about how we need to think about building our communities, protecting our resources, and, well, preparing for the future? Mm -hmm.